Well, hello everyone, and welcome to my review of the 2022 Ford Maverick Lariat, here with every option box ticked in its most premium format. And this is a vehicle that might just be one of the most logical new car purchases that someone could go out and make. Whether it is that you're looking for a truck or just a compact crossover, this Maverick should be on your list of vehicles that need to be test driven. And here's why. If you are the kind of person that partakes in outdoorsy activities that require some level of equipment, or you're just someone that does a lot of garbage runs or recycling runs, and you don't want to muck up the interior of your vehicle, having a bed bag there makes a lot of sense. The bed is four and a half feet and six feet when you drop down the non-dampened tailgate. It has a max payload capacity of 1,500 pounds and it can go all the way up to 4,000 pounds towing if you select the additional towing package. I am very compelled by this vehicle and I think it's going to be attractive to a lot of people that, like I said, not only just want a compact crossover, but anybody that might want a little bit extra on top of that. But even saying that, you shouldn't be shopping for the Maverick only if you want that additional amount of capability because there's a lot to like about this product. But first of all, I'll talk about what is under the hood of the Ford Maverick. Two powertrain options. You start off with the entry level two and a half liter four cylinder hybrid setup with a solid beam rear axle and front wheel drive only. For this vehicle I'm driving, I have the two liter four cylinder twin scroll turbocharged motor that has 250 horsepower, 277 pound feet of torque. It can come with front wheel drive or all wheel drive. And if this one is front wheel drive, it will have the independent multi-link suspension, same with the all-wheel drive version two. And with the Lariat trim, you can only get it with all-wheel drive. So it shares the same powertrains that are available currently with the Escape and the Escape Hybrid. The transmission has no manual operation. It's an eight-speed auto, just like what it is in the Escape. There are times where it feels a little clunky to me, especially when it's cold. So I'm hopeful that in a mid-cycle update or something like that, Ford will put the 10-speed into this product and the Escape as well for that matter. But quite interestingly, comparing the prices of the Maverick to the Escape, you can get into the Maverick for slightly less money and for a vehicle that's a lot more versatile. I think this is the vehicle you should end up with if you were going to shop for an Escape. Now saying that, this vehicle isn't perfect. Um, first of all, the styling is very bland. There really isn't much to look at for the exterior, but if that's where they saved money, then I don't mind because you get into the cabin of this Lariat with all of the option box ticked, and this is one of the most enjoyable interiors at an affordable price point. You'll see that a lot of the materials here, even though they might be hard scratchy plastics they're emotive and they look like they've been passionately designed like you've got a black steering wheel but a lot of the other components in here are a light or a dark blue you'll see there's textures to a lot of these different components and so far i'm very impressed with the build quality another interesting feature with the maverick is that it has a lot of rubberized components that you can take out and clean or if they ever got so badly damaged, just buy replacement models to them too. The storage space is very intelligent and even though I'm a tall guy, I'm six foot four and the seat bases are a little bit short for me, I can happily stretch out my legs far behind the gas and brake pedal. So even though I definitely don't have the truck-like position, it's not a body on frame, of course, so I'm not sitting incredibly high off of the road, I do feel equally matched in terms of H points, that's the seat base point, against other compact crossovers that pass me by. The back seat space is very compelling too. If I were to sit behind myself, it's definitely tighter than what it is up against a Ranger, but I could sit back there if need be. You can fold up those seat bases and there's some deep cubbies down there. Definitely enough for maybe three or four pairs 
of big mucky boots and you'll see that there's these little slots found throughout the vehicle and a QR code spotted here and there and if you scan that QR code it takes you to a website where Ford basically can teach you how to build your own components or 3D print components so that like back there where you see your USB plugins and the AC power port you could 3D print a cup holder of some kind even though you've already got a couple with that stowaway armrest. If you want to fold the rear seats down you can but I would probably advise you not to do so. Uh, so there's a lot of componentry exposed and I'm sure it would make a real nightmare if you toss something in back there, damage the cable, that's probably not going to be an easy fix. And you will need to take the headrests out if you want to try and fold it down all the way and even still it's not a totally flat base. So I would say just to make your life significantly easier, fold up the base of the seats and throw stuff under there. A couple other things I want to address that I'm not so fond of in the Maverick is that even though this is based on the Escape, and I like the Escape's scrappy driving nature, um, it doesn't translate so well into the Maverick, particularly the steering. It just feels quite inconsistent to me. I know it's got the same variable electric power steering that so many other Fords have, but with this I find it a lot less predictable and sometimes you'll be going around a long sweeping corner and you can really feel that variability change when you're holding the steering wheel in a certain position that I've never felt before in another Ford. Anything else I don't like? Uh, well I think the rear visibility is a little bit tight, not too bad though and for whatever reason the keyless entry for the front doors here in the Maverick haven't worked at all during my time testing. With the FX4 package that's been selected here for this Maverick, it gets a couple of additional driving modes outside of your normal tow and haul modes. You'll get a mud slash ruts mode and a sand mode. The FX4 package also adds some additional cooling capability, skid plates, and these all-terrain tires on the 17-inch rims. Now to talk money for a little bit, it is really quite compelling that with the Maverick, when you go to the very top of the trims for this Maverick with all of the options in it and the Escape Titanium with a fair amount of options selected, this is still ever so slightly less and given how much nicer of an interior this is compared to the last few Escapes I've driven, I think you'd be really missing out if you went for the Escape as opposed to the Maverick. Again, you might not really think you are going to ever be in the position where you need that truck versatility. But I really think Ford is accessing a portion of the market that hasn't really been accessed before and I think could be deeply, deeply successful for them if they really try to sell that niche scenario to buyers. The what ifs of, oh, I want to start a garden this year. Well, I'm probably going to have to buy a lot of soil, a lot of smaller componentry, and that's just going to mess up my interior. The Maverick makes a lot of sense. I am very compelled by this vehicle. So is there anything else I want to say? I am standing firmly in my position that if you are looking for a compact crossover, even though this isn't one, it should be one that you try out. Really apply your own life to this product. Are you someone that regularly skis? Are you someone that is likely to start up some home projects and renovations and all that? And Maybe you're a little more space sensitive or you don't want the inefficiency of a mid-size Ranger or a full-size F-150. Nothing, I think, will be able to replace the capability, of course, of a full-size light-duty pickup truck. But for the occasional use, for the kind of uses where you aren't planning to max out the capability of a truck, I think the Maverick is an excellent vehicle. So thank you so much for taking the time to watching this video, and I hope to see you again on the channel soon.